Simon says subscribe and click on the bell icon to receive notifications. One of the most common tools that you'll be using is the selection tool. So if we look over here in the upper left of our toolbar, we're going to see this black arrow. Now the selection tool allows you to not only select objects, but also resize objects and rotate objects, and also give you information about the objects. So as an example, if I were to click on this, I select it, and you'll see I get this little bounding box around it. Now if I go over here to the corners, you'll notice I can go ahead and click and drag and I can resize it. If I come outside of the corner, you'll notice here I get this little kind of button hook and it's going to allow me to rotate. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to this arrow, do the same thing, come to the corner and just simply click and drag. Now a nice little tip is if I hold down the shift key as I do that, it's going to lock into place every 45 degrees. So I know I want to do a perfect arrow facing left, I can hold down the shift key and it will lock into place for that rotation. Now, you'll also notice that when I select it, I will also have a whole bunch of options over here in my properties panel. We're going to be spending a lot of time in the properties panel in this course. But the thing to understand about the properties panel is that it's context based. So if I were to select on this object, you'll notice I'm going to get a whole bunch of options to know about that, the properties of that particular file. And if I go over to here to my text, now if I select on the heart, you'll notice that when I click on it, it shows me the fill color. That's fantastic. And you'll also see that I can see the fill color here and the fill color there. Let's click on my star. You'll notice that the fill color now changes to reflect that color yellow. So you have to select it to affect it. So just understand that that is what the selection tool does. Now many times you will have an opportunity to double click on an object. So for example, if I were to double click on the star, you're going to see this takes me into what's called isolation mode. Certain objects require you to double click on them using the selection tool to be able to drill down and see that this object may be a group, it might be a compound path, it might even be some text if you double click on it, you'll be able to edit it. I'm going to go ahead and click on this little back button to get me out of isolation mode. The other thing to understand is that certain things may not be clickable when you try to click on them. As an example, let's go over to here to our layers panel, which we brought up in an earlier exercise. And I want you to notice that I have two layers. We're going to go all into layers in just a little bit, but I just want you to notice this first thing here is that this has a little lock icon and then notice it's BG for background. And if I were to open this up, you'll be able to see that there's a whole bunch of stuff in there. So as an example, this background I cannot click on because it is locked. So if I unlock it and then I click on it, you'll notice now I can click on this and I can go ahead and move this text around if I want to, and I can even delete it if I wanted to. So I'm just going to click on edit and then undo, edit and then undo, and it comes right back. Or just notice the shortcut key of control or command Z to undo as well. All right, so just understand that using the selection tool, I can select something and then affect it in terms of moving it, in terms of rotating it, resizing it. And if something is not selectable, it might mean the fact that it's locked. So just keep that in mind. Now in a little bit, we're going to talk about its counterpart, the direct selection tool. But I just want to first make the distinction about what this tool does. And it's a very basic tool, very helpful tool, and it works well with the properties panel as well as the layers panel. So practice that briefly and we'll see you in the next lesson. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.